Hey guys, welcome to a follow-up tutorial to our 3ds Max tutorial on reorienting animations. We're gonna continue our journey with Maya this time. I will definitely recommend watching the last tutorial on 3ds Max if you are new to this series. Even if you don't use 3ds Max, I do explain a lot of theory in that video and also introducing a way to get a really cool mocap animations for free. So don't miss it. Also maybe something that is important to mention, I will introduce multiple interesting things from software to software. Here I will explain how to reorient an animation in Maya using a few cool twists and turns, but unlike in 3ds Max tutorial, where we used our own plugin to reorient and batch multiple animations, I will explain how you use a script yourself on reorienting animations. Don't worry, I will provide the code for the script you need. A huge thanks to our lead technical artist Alexander Raab, who helped me shape this tutorial and provided the script for us. To start off, we again need the files we used in the 3ds Max tutorial. A few motions like running and walking, to refresh your memory on why we are doing this. The reason is that the rig and the joints are facing the wrong direction on the y-axis in our world coordinate system in CryEngine. We use the y-axis as the forward direction, z is up and x is right. This means if you would use this character as a playable entity, the character would face the opposite direction. We need to change that. I will explain how you can reorient the animation into the opposite direction in 3ds Max, Maya and Blender. Okay, everything clean so far? We need to start a bit differently this time. We're gonna import our animation straight up into Maya. So choose any animation you have and import it. I'm going to go for the run animation. If you open Maya for the first time, just stick with me. I will try to explain as much as needed, but detailed tutorials are out of my scope to cover. One thing that is pretty important is the outliner. If you don't have the outliner from the start, Please just follow me here and click this button over here. With this button, you can open and close the outliner. This is where all of our information is stored, the rig and the mesh, very important to us. Now we need to import our mentioned animation. You can do that by navigating to file and down here, click on import. An import window should pop up where we can navigate to our files. Here is my running file. You got your file? Okay, click on import. Now we should have the animation right here. By holding control, you can move your view with the middle mouse button. Rotate your view with the left mouse button and zoom in and out with your right mouse button. In the outliner, we can now see what we have in our scene. We have our mesh and we have our rig. Here in the timeline, you can move the slider to preview the animation. One thing is missing that we need to add on our own. If you paid attention to our last tutorial, you might already know that we need our root bone. If you need a refresher why we need a root bone, please watch the 3ds Max reorienting animations tutorial. Okay, let's go to work. At the left corner right under the file bottom, we have a selection. You can see all the different options here and since we want to add a bone, that goes with rigging. Right under that selection, you have a variety of different tabs to work with in Maya. We in this case will only focus on the rigging tab. If it hasn't been opened by now, just click on a rigging tab. All we need to do here is to create a new joint. We do this by clicking this button and then double click into our viewport to create a joint. We can now see in our channel box and in the outliner a joint was created. We need to place this joint at 000, 000 position, so it's right underneath our character. Navigate to the channel box and set the translation values to 0. Now we need to set the correct rotation for our joint, which then becomes the root bone. Set the rotate x axis to 90, leave the y axis to 0, and change the x axis to 180 degrees. So now we have positioned our joint to a correct space in our world coordinate system in CryEngine. Let's rename our joint to root in the outliner by double clicking on it. Great. Now we need to point parent our root bone with the skeleton of Mixamo. 
I'm going to explain later why. Click on the Mixamo rig and then on the root bone while holding control. We have to click on the rig first since that's the object we are going to parent our root bone with. Navigate to the Constraint tab and click on Point, but not on the text. We need the pop-up menu for this function, so click on the little box over here. Here we have the additional settings we can adjust. We're going to maintain our offset and we set the layer to override. We're only going to constrain the Z-axis in this case. So deselect everything else and click on the Z-axis option. Cool. Now click Apply and close this pop-up. So now we successfully attached our root to the moving animation. But we're not there yet. Click on the root in the outliner and navigate back up here to the key tab and down here bake animation. We now bake the animation or the information of translation from the hip bone to the root bone. If we now play the animation you can see the root bone which is really small moving along the animation. That's awesome. But now we need to do some shady stuff. You can see that our root joint, or bone, you can name it however you like, has a small plus over here. We can unfold it and see our point constraint here to the hip bone. Click on it and then delete it. What we did is we successfully transferred the translation or the motion of the animation in the hip bone to the root bone. Baked it and then we got rid of the constraint since we don't have a use for it anymore. Now. Here comes the interesting part. Since we got rid of the constraint, the movement of the hip bone and the root bone are the same. We need to parent them, since CryEngine requires a root bone to be in the top of a hierarchy. We are going to click on the Mixamo rig. In the channel box, we are going to select all the translation options and then click with the right mouse button on it. Now we are going to delete selected. We now deleted the translation movement from the rig. Why? Well, now if we parent our root bone to our rig, we will have the same movement, but only our root bone is the one who's driving it. To parent properly, we select the joint icon in the outliner and drag it to our root bone. And we're done. You see, but one thing is missing. If we play the animation, the root bone is moving along with the animation. In game development, sometimes to have that motion as a playable character can cause some troubles. Your coder might code the forward motion in place, or it is animation driven. It depends really on the project. We use different techniques in different of our project. There is no downside or upside to each and one of them as far as I know. So if you want to have your forward motion to be in place, click on the root bone and also delete the selected translation options like you did with the Mixamo rig. And then you'll have your animation perfectly in place. Got that so far? Okay, let's move to exporting our animation. Go to the file tab again here and click on export all. Navigate to a place where you want to drop your animation. Done that. We also need to select a type of our animation in which we want our animation to be exported to. In this case, of course, FBX. In the Option tab, we need to select a few options here. First of all, open the File Type specific option. Go to Animation and select Animation. Underneath that, go to Bake Animation and click on a checkbox on that as well. A bit further down, we need to select our constraints and if we have any, Skeleton Definitions. If we don't, the export process will tell you, but it won't cause any problems. Click on Export. Now we should have that FBX file saved somewhere. We're going to test it later in the engine, but for now, let's find a cool way to speed up that process a bit. Let's import our T-Post character in Maya. By now, you should know how to do this, right? Having the character open in Maya, we need to create a root bone and repeat the same steps we already did. Settings the translation to zero and reorienting the root bone to the correct values 90, 0 and 180 degrees. And don't forget to rename the bone to root. Now let us import again another animation that we have. I'm going for a jump animation here. You decide for yourself. But before importing, there is an option here in animation range combined to include source. 
So those two files, T-Pose and the Jump Animation, are combined in the output. Click that and click Import. In the video description, you will find a link where you will be able to find some code, a Python script. All you will need to do is simply download it. Open the script menu by clicking over here in Maya, and then drag and drop the file right here into the Python script editor. Now, to run, you only need to play the file right over here. But before playing that script, you need to select the root bone and the Mixamo rig first in the outliner. Got that? Play the script. And done. You reoriented and did all the steps we learned earlier. You can now import that animation, but before you can, always decide whether you want to have the motion to be in place or not. Now let's open the engine really quick. Open an empty level or create a new one. And in the asset browser, create a new folder, tutorials or something. And then simply drag and drop your FBX file into this folder in the asset browser. Within a few seconds, all the files we need should be generated automatically. We have all the files we need to test it. Drag this file, which is the CDF, into your viewport. If you did this, assign an animation to it. And as you can see, the animation is playing in the CryEngine world coordinate system, where Y is the forward direction. We successfully learned a way to reorient an animation not by reorienting everything we have in the FBX, but rather just give the direction to a root bone and then attach everything else to it. This is how impressive and powerful a root bone can be. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. Huge thanks to Alexander Raab, who hammered this amazing knowledge inside my brain and helped me to put this tutorial together. If you enjoyed it and even learned something, leave a comment and also leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials. We also have some amazing social media links right in the info box. Check them out. You can always ask us a question on our Twitter account, Discord channel and more. Bye bye.